Hi there, Steve here. I've come back from my skiing. I'm going to do another video about language systems to follow up on the earlier one. Um, just a little before I get started, uh, just to brag a bit about Vancouver. Uh, 25 minutes from my home, I can go skiing. There's three or four meters of snow there, great big trees, one meter in diameter, great tall Douglas fir trees, uh, cypress trees. Uh, it was sunny, then we had a little bit of a snow flurry, and there's trails everywhere. There's also downhill skiing, but I prefer the cross country. And uh, while I was up there, my wife was off playing golf, which is also 25 minutes from our home. So uh, it's kind of nice that way. Now, I was talking about language learning systems. I talked about Pimsleur and SML and, and so forth. And most of the systems deal with getting people started. And uh, I think there, it really almost doesn't matter what you do. The objective is to get away from the learner, learning type content and get to real content as quickly as you can. I think for most European languages, Western European languages, three months is enough. For Russian, maybe six months. For Asian languages, maybe nine months. And you want to get on to real content as soon as possible. I didn't talk much about Rosetta Stone because I haven't used it. My son used it. He didn't like it. Uh, it's quite expensive. It's $300 or whatever it is, $250. It doesn't cover very much. Uh, you're obliged to sit by the computer. There's lots of pictures and games and God knows what canned content. Uh, so I, I don't think it's a very good investment. Uh, I would rather spend $30 uh, to buy a teach yourself book or a colloquial book to get past that initial stage. Uh, plus the Rosetta Stone has you spending a lot of time in front of the computer. Uh, I would say I spend 80 or 90 percent of my language learning time away from the computer, either reading or listening. Uh, obviously, you know, I've talked about this before, the, uh, the iPod, in particular the iPod Shuffle, let's see, get in front of the computer here, is, uh, is an ideal little tool. Uh, while I was up uh, skiing, I was listening to content in Russian, I was listening to content in Italian. Uh, there's so much wonderful content on the internet, news content, history content, old radio programs, uh, Il Gastronauta from Rai on, on food in Italy, and I was listening to 20-year-old radio programs about Marco Polo in Italian and stuff. Now, they're not all as well organized for the language learner as Eka Moskvi. Uh, in that they don't provide transcripts. Uh, we are approaching some uh, podcasters and asking them to... Uh, to let us provide them with transcripts in exchange for them, in exchange for which they then talk about Link, which has been moderately successful. Let's see, uh, what else can I talk about? Um, books, yeah. Once, therefore, once you get past the uh, the sort of beginner stage, you're now into different kinds of readers. Um, this was an intermediate book that I used for uh, for my Korean, and and I didn't like it. Uh, the content was boring lots of unnecessary explanation and and one of the reasons why I stopped uh, doing Korean and went on to Russian is that um, there was really not very much interesting content available for Korean. Russian, I bought a number of different books. Here's an example of how not to do that next stage. It's, it's, a, it's called Advanced Russian Through History. Diela davno nyuvshich dnie. Interesting content, very interesting content, very well written. But they just take what could be an excellent book, like interesting content about Russian history, and they go about making people dislike it. First of all, they're very proud of the fact that the CD that comes with it is not the same as the texts. Now, why? Uh, so when I listened to this, when I, you know, a year and a half ago when I started on this, I would listen to the CD, I wouldn't understand very much, and it wasn't the same as the text. So I couldn't get that symbiotic, synergi synergistic benefit of listening to the same stuff as I'm reading. And they've got, uh, you know, all kinds of preface for the students, how to make this uh, uh, an uninteresting thing to do. Uh, they, uh, you know, uh, each Chapter is accompanied by learning tasks uh, to make sure you don't like it. As Ruben Alves says, nothing destroys the enjoyment of reading as much as being asked to analyze or describe what you've just been listening to. 
and they have a, a list of, of 25 tasks that you're supposed to do, learning tasks here, four pre-reading tasks, read guided questions in English to prepare to read the chapter's task. Uh, what else here they got? Read alphabetically sequenced lists of historical, geographical, and political terms. Uh, then they've got map, act, locate important places on a map, answer general comprehension questions in English, all before you read it. Come on, get serious. Reading tasks, uh, identify the ideological perspective of the author. I mean, I'm reading about Genghis Khan. You know, what I choose to take out of the reading is, is maybe I hear the, the sound of, of horses hooves on the steps as the Mongol horde is attacking the Russians or something. I don't want to worry about the ideology of the writer. Uh, then they got a bunch of stuff. Find words in a text with given roots and analyze given words by roots. You know, and it just goes on and on. And that's only number seven of their 25. You know, work with pronouns and antecedents. Translate this. Rewrite sentences. Yeah, just, just goes on and on. 25 learning tasks. The wrong thing to do. I enjoyed... The text would have been better with sound. I enjoyed the CD. It took me a long time before I could um, understand it. I would have loved to have had the e-text of that. I would have imported it into Link. I would have saved all those words and phrases to my database. I would have reviewed them. Um, all this business about roots and suffixes and prefixes. Yeah, I've got thousands of words saved in Link. I can search by suffixes and prefixes when I want to, not as part of a deliberate you know, a list of tasks that I have to do that are going to destroy my enjoyment of the text. So that was that. Uh, really then, I think when we're talking about systems, let me just then go over again what I think is important. The internet is, is, is actually is going to, re has revolutionized and, and more and more will revolutionize language learning. You can get uh, seminars, lectures. I mean, these wonderful Italian lectures on Italian history, on ancient history, on the history of, of modern history of, of Rome from the 1880s through the First World War, Second World War. Uh, now, they don't all have transcripts, but that's going to come. And so we access those, access those on the internet. We have tools on the internet to help us through them. In the old days, if I had to read something, uh, I needed a word list. Or I had to read something where there was only a small percentage of new words. That's no longer the case. I can get at it, get my online dictionary, work my way through it, listen to it a few times, you know, get to where I kind of half know it. Then I take my iPod shuffle up skiing. I take it, uh, you know, while I'm doing the dishes and I learn. Or, uh, you know, as in the case of the Kreutzer Sonata, I, I do a lot of listening. This is one of the reasons why I was able to get onto this very early in my studies is that I got an excellent audiobook in, in Riga, Latvia, in Russian. The voice was excellent. I enjoyed listening to it. I listened to it many, many, many times. So I was able to go through the text on link, get all the words into my database, review them. I was able to read it in, in uh, you know, a nice, comfortable book format, and I was able to listen to it. Now, one day when they enable these ebook readers like Kindle and the Sony ebook reader to the point where they have uh, a lot of the functionality that we have, I mean, maybe I won't, I, I don't know, maybe I'll like reading it and I'll have with me my little ebook reader uh, with all of my link functionality and uh, quick access. Like, again, here on the internet, yeah, I have trouble with my cases and declensions and stuff. I have that, you know, saved, a uh, favorite. I can go to a site where I can see these declensions and that all helps me. So there's a whole range of resources that are available via the internet with modern technology that makes all these other textbooks uh, obsolete and, and increasingly, I think, will convince people that they don't have to go to a school to learn, that it's more uh, important to commit yourself to learning uh, with interesting content. So there you have it. I kind of wandered a bit, but I uh, hope that was uh, useful to you. Thank you. Bye for now.